Prince Chatham and to our service of thanksgiving for the life of Ronald Grinstead, better known to us, of course, as Ron. My name's Andrea Ward and I'm the priest in charge here and I'm joined this afternoon by my colleague, uh, Reverend Jenny Warrington. And we warmly welcome those gathered here in the church building and those of you joining us from your homes watching the live stream as well. We come together today to remember Ron and to celebrate and give thanks for his life, all that he meant and continues to mean to each one of us. And as we gather also to say goodbye to Ron and to commend him into God's care, we pray that in this time of sadness, we might know something of God's love, his comfort and hope for the future. Now just uh, one practical thing for those of us uh, gathered in the church. At the end of the service, uh, please would you just remain in your seats until one of our uh, two sides people, our stewards, um, ask you to leave. And uh, Sue will be outside uh, to greet you. Um, but please do just remember that, uh, sadly, uh, due to current restrictions at this time and for everyone's safety, uh, we can't gather outside together with one another but I know just how much it means to Sue uh, that you are all here uh, in the building and also at home um, thinking and remembering Ron today. After our service, uh, Sue uh, will, and I will be joining Ron's family for a service at Medway Crematorium. And finally, if you'd like to make a donation in memory of Ron, you'll find details of Ron's chosen uh, charity and how to donate on the back of the uh, special service order that you have this afternoon. So let us begin by taking a moment of quiet in God's loving presence. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. God of all consolation, your son Jesus Christ was moved to tears at the grave of Lazarus, his friend. Look with compassion on your children in their loss. Give to troubled hearts the light of hope, and strengthen in us the gift of faith, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, Ron was, of course, a member of All Saints Church family and was a choir member here too. And the hymns in our service this afternoon uh, were chosen by Ron. And although those of us gathered in the church uh, can't sing, um, if you're watching at home, please do uh, sing as Ron would have loved you to. Uh, and these hymns were recorded by members of the church. And so we begin with, O oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end, and I suggest that you might like to remain seated as we listen. O oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle, if thou art by my side. Nor wander from the pathway, if thou wilt be my guide. Oh, let me feel thee near me. The world is ever near. I see the sights that dazzle, the tempting sounds I hear. My foes are ever near me, around me and within. But Jesus, draw thou nearer and shield my soul from sin. Let me hear thee speaking in accents clear and still. Above the storms of passion, the murmurs of self-will. Oh, speak to me, assure me, 
no place nor control. Oh, speak and make me listen, thou guardian of my soul. Oh, let me see thy footmarks, and in them plant my own. My hope to follow duly is in my strength alone. Oh, guide me, call me, draw me, uphold me to the end, and then in heaven receive me, my Saviour and my friend, and then in heaven receive me, my Saviour and my Good afternoon. It is my privilege uh, to bring a few memories uh, of Ron. Ronald Alfred George Grinstead, known to all as Ron, was born in Chatham, born, raised and indeed lived almost his whole life in and around Chatham. His parents, Gert and Alfred, had two children. Ron was the eldest and then there was a nine-year gap between Ron and his younger sister, Pam. Pam remembers Ron as a wonderful brother who used to take her everywhere. She even enjoyed it when she was out with Ron and his friends and they used her pushchair as their cricket stumps. And yes, she was still sitting in it. I do hope they used soft balls. Ron loved his little sister and didn't think twice about taking her into the boys' only club. Wherever Ron went, there was Pam. The list of schools Ron attended as a child is, is quite extensive. He started out at St John's Infant and Junior School and then on to New Road School. He was then evacuated to Todmorden, north of Manchester, to live with his mother's cousin, Margaret. There he got to know Margaret's sister, Betty, and by all accounts, they spent many happy times together. After the war, Ron returned to Chatham, where he managed just four and a half days at Highfield Street School, before moving on to Byron School in Gillingham, and then Napier Road School, and then Rochester Tech, and finally Chatham Technology School. We're not entirely sure why he moved school so often, but what we do know is that on leaving, school Ron took the Chatham Dockyard exams, which he duly passed, and became a shipwright apprentice. At the age of 20, he was called up to national service, where he spent two years as a linesman and storeman. Ron was offered a job as an instructor during his time in the army, but he turned this down. Rather than being an instructor, he was posted to Malaysia, although his posting was changed at the last minute and he ended up in Hong Kong, where he became a senior linesman and assistant stall houseman. Those of you who know Ron, knew Ron, will know that he loved to tell stories, particularly of his military service days. And I have a couple for you now that Sue has shared with me both of which are based on the fact that Ron could sleep like a log. The first story from his army days was when two men who had been demobbed came into the barracks when Ron was fast asleep. They managed to turn his bed upside down with him in it, and it was only when they flipped him back the right way that he began to stir. Can you imagine that scene? The other, even more remarkable story of his ability to sleep through anything was he, when he was on active duty, on exercise in Hong Kong. He decided to take a nap on the side of a hill. Not only did his own company not manage to wake him, but two members of the opposing regiment succeeded in using him as a human shield without waking him. 
They fired blank bullets and thunder flashes over him without interrupting any of his 40 winks. He only found out what had happened when he woke naturally from his uninterrupted nap, only to be told what had happened by his mates. Now that's what I call a deep sleeper. Sue has a copy of his military conduct report and it's a great privilege to read out the testimonial he received when he was discharged from his time in national service. It reads, Ron Grinstead was a thoroughly reliable, hard-working soldier who required the minimum of supervision. He is intelligent, tries hard, sober and trustworthy. He's been employed as a linesman and storeman. A short, succinct, and yet wonderful tribute to Ron. Thoroughly reliable, hardworking, intelligent, trustworthy. But no mention of his astounding sleeping abilities. He returned to his job in the dockyards where he remained for 39 years, working his way up to the position of professional technology officer, grade four. On the 15th of August, 1953, he married Joan, and they enjoyed 59 and a half years of married life together. And although Joan became very unwell, Ron looked after her and cared for her for many years. Towards the end, Ron did all the cooking and by all accounts made some amazing meals, as long as Joan gave him precise instructions. Joan sadly passed away in March, 2013. Ron enjoyed gardening and spent many hours in his beloved garden. He loved the company of children and even though he and Joan didn't have any of their own, he adored his nieces and nephews, Susan, David, John and Claire. And he was godfather to David. In his latter years, he would enjoy talking to the children and young people at All Saints Church and was very encouraging of them. He loved music, and as we've already heard, he was part of the All Saints Choir. He was a regular and much-loved member of Roy and Francis's home group, and there are some wonderful stories of his dramatic acting abilities. He enjoyed socialising, going out to the theatre, especially if it involved food. Ron and Sue became close friends uh, following Joan's death and she introduced him to the Wednesday Lunch Club at All Saints Church, which he always enjoyed. And he also used to enjoy going out for meals with Sue and her three other lady friends. And then there were regular meals out with Roy and Francis and meals out with Maureen. And I can't imagine it took much persuasion for Maureen to get him out with Sue on his 90th birthday. Ron certainly loved his food. Ron also loved animals. And there's a funny story of Ron befriending a bull. Not something many people would be able to do. He just seemed to have a way with animals. He adored Sue's cats, who would happily settle down and sit on his lap for hours on end. Sue moved in as Ron's companion five years ago, and she describes Ron as kind, mild-mannered, extremely patient, a man who rarely lost his temper. In the last few years, Ron's health deteriorated. He had stage four kidney disease, kidney cancer, sorry, plus heart and gastric problems. And I remember Ron having extensive surgery for skin cancer on his head not that long ago. His last months were marred with frequent admissions to hospital, declining eyesight and regular falls. But he held fast to his faith and his friendships with Sue and others. I'm sure that all who met Ron will have their own memories and stories, but he will be sorely missed by Sue, his friends and family, including his church family here at All Saints.
Well, thank you very much, uh, Jenny, for sharing uh, those wonderful thoughts, reflections and memories. We'll all have our own special memories of Ron here and uh, at home, and we're going to take just a moment or two now to reflect in the quiet with our own thoughts. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the memories of Ron which we treasure and the comfort they bring us. In Jesus' name, amen. An important part of our gathering this afternoon as we reflect and give thanks is also to bring comfort to one another and to think about the comfort that we can find in God and particularly in the context of a Christian service through the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Bible reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This afternoon, we've had an opportunity to think together about someone who, in so many different ways, has touched our lives. We rejoice that Ron enjoyed such a long and fulfilled life. And I'm sure, too, that we take some comfort in knowing that Ron has been released from the struggles of poor health, particularly over the past year. Today's service is so very much one of thanksgiving. And yet, of course, we cannot and must not deny the sadness that we no longer share our lives with Ron. The death of someone we love however young or old, brings us face to face as well with our own mortality, something that none of us understandably like to think about. But the sorrow that death brings and the question of, so what is there after life, is right at the heart of the Christian faith. The Bible talks a lot about it. And for St. Paul, who penned the words of the Bible reading that we've just listened to, of course, there was a fundamental difference in his understanding of the outcome of death to the rest of the world around him. So much so that it led him to say with confidence, brothers and sisters, we don't want you to grieve as others do who have no hope. And for those today who, like Paul, believe in the promises of Jesus Christ, there can be that same understanding and experience that within their grief, there is also a real sense of hope. For we gather today, not simply to celebrate a life that has come to an end, but also to celebrate in faith, a life that is just beginning. In our service today, we've looked back and remembered Ron's life here on earth. But now we look forward in hope and faith to a whole new life that Ron, as one who trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, has begun the other side of death. For to those who believe in the good news of the Christian message, death is no longer the end, but rather a gate through which we pass into a new and glorious life where we will be welcomed by a multitude of fellow believers in Christ, 
those who've gone before us and are waiting to give us the most rapturous welcome. You get a a sense of that, I think, in our Bible reading when Paul talks about God's trumpet call. Yes, I'm sure that Ron's arrival in heaven is accompanied by a fanfare. Jesus, when talking with his friends, the disciples, promised that he was going ahead of them to prepare a place for them in his house. A place in which there'll be no more tears, no more sorrow or death, only the most extraordinary love and abundance of life in God's presence. A glorious future that will never tarnish or fade, in which we will never grow old and perish, but will put on clothes of immortality. And it is through placing our trust in Jesus, in his death and resurrection, and his power to raise us to a new life, that we can receive the gift of eternal life in heaven. Now, of course, this faith and hope doesn't take away our sadness. Of course, we will miss Ron deeply. But as our Bible reading told us, we do not need to grieve like those who have no hope. For having shared together in our faith in Christ here on earth, we will also one day share together for eternity, reunited in God's presence. So today, as we entrust Ron into God's loving care, may we each turn to and place our trust in Jesus that we might know the comfort of his love in our time of sorrow and the sure hope of eternal life with God and in his loving presence. Amen. Where is death's sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. So we're going to listen now to our next hymn chosen by Ron, Abide With Me, after which Jenny will come and lead us in our prayers. Oh, 
Eternal God and Father, we praise you that you have made people to share life together and to reflect your glory in the world. We thank you now for Ron, for all of your goodness and love that he showed to others and for all that he means to each one gathered here. We thank you for his love of you and for the part he played in the life of your church here at St. Paul with All Saints. Father, you know our hearts and share our sorrows. You know those here who are hurting, hurting because they are parted from Ron, whom they loved. Lord, we pray for those who mourn, for each one present, whether at church or watching at home. Be gentle with them in their grief. Show them the depth of your love and a glimpse of the kingdom of heaven. Lord, when we long for words of comfort yet find them hard to hear, we pray that you would turn our grief into firm hope in your son, Jesus. Lord, would you bless those who cared for Ron, bless Sue, bless the doctors and nurses who looked after him, especially those at Medway Hospital. Bless all those who faithfully visited, provided food, or support and friendship throughout his life, and especially in these last few years. Heavenly Father, our life is a fleeting shadow that does not endure. Our years pass quickly, our days are few and full of trouble. We thank you, Lord, that Ron is no longer in pain. He no longer has to suffer with fear, that his days of frailty, illness, and limitation are ended. Weakness is overcome, and death itself is conquered. So God, our Father, we thank you that Ron is safely in your hands, and we look towards the time when we will meet him again. In the name of Jesus, amen. And we bring our prayers together by saying the prayer that Jesus taught us that you'll find in your service sheet. We say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Please would you stand.
We've remembered Ron in our prayers and given thanks to God for all he's shared with us. And so remembering the mercy of our Father in heaven, let us commend Ron to God, our maker and redeemer. God, our creator and redeemer, by your power, Christ conquered death and entered into glory. Confident of his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust Ron to your mercy in the name of Jesus our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. And so before our final prayer, we're going to listen to our final hymn, The Day Thou Gave Us, Lord, is Ended, and you might like to be seated for this hymn. So as our service here draws to a close, I invite you, if you're able to, to stand for our final prayer. Now may Christ the Good Shepherd enfold us with love, fill us with peace, and lead us in hope to the end of our days. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And so as we prepare to leave, we're going to listen to the Lord's My Shepherd. <laughs> 